who is the worst, attention whore, you've come across. I knew a girl in college whose father died at least six times over the span of one semester. Like, we would be hanging out, and then she gets a call, and then she drops the phone, her eyes go red, and the waterworks start. My grandma has to make everything about her, literally everything, no matter the person or situation, and if the conversation switches to where it's not about her, she gets visibly annoyed and you can see the gears turning in her head as she tries to figure out how to get the conversation back onto her. She constantly retells stories she's already told 1000 times back from when she was younger if she can't think of anything recent. If I have to ever again hear about how she was prom queen back in 1951, or valedictorian of her 10-person 8th grade class, or how whenever she goes anywhere, everyone just loves her she literally says and you know, they just loved me all the time, I'm gonna lose it. My roommate's cat died last week, when she told her co-workers. One lady proceeded to start telling a story about a cat she kinda owned that never even lived with her that died 5 plus years ago. She got so worked up that she started crying and the entire office started consoling the co-worker instead of my roommate whose cat had died the day before. Unbelievable. My fiancé has been my best friend since we were kids. Once. In high school, he was dating a girl who decided that after scaring the shit out of him by trying to cuff him to the bed against his will, she was going to threaten to kill herself if he dumped her. About 10 years later I ran into her at a party. She was there with her husband and infant son not the kind of party you take a baby to. But okay. She proceeded to tell me how they never technically broke up since. Being 15 years old. His answer to if you dump me I'll kill myself was to just stop talking to her. And because of that, they were technically still together and she was cheating on him with her husband, making her son a bastard. She was 100% serious. And she also told me to tell him she wanted an apology. This was in front of a lot of very stunned people. There's a girl in my college classes who claims her dad owns a huge soccer team but doesn't know the name. She's dating one of the LA Lakers but can't give his name out. But she is also talking to someone who's in the NFL to keep her options open. She says her dad works at a local steel factory and has no idea where his extra money comes from because he gives her hush money then called another girl out in class for lying to fit in girl in college would constantly try to get attention oh my boyfriend dumped me my new guy beats me i'm gay i'm not gay i own a signed kurt cobain bass guitar but by far the worst one i was raped and the guy got sent to prison gave people a paper cut out of a rape case but it looked odd so i tracked it down using the google and found she had altered it and it was some other girl we all cut ties with her after that F psycho anyone who checks in at the hospital on facebook sister-in-law. At our wedding she did everything she could to steal attention away from her sister-me wife. She wore a dress that Shed had altered to be both low-cut and short-skirted. Then when no one was paying her attention kept accidentally dropping things so she'd would bend over to pick them up. When her dad remarried she was telling people at the ceremony that she had cancer, but had come to terms with ITSHE didn't have cancer there was this British TV show about bad moms and one of them made her daughter dress way older than she looked daughter wanted to wear a t-shirt and jeans to go out to eat. Mom made her wear tights, mini skirt, boots, tight tee, sleeveless overcoat, and a boatload of jewelry. Kid basically looked like she was in a Disney show and would make her daughter randomly sing and do her cheer routine in public because you never know who's watching. People get discovered on the streets every day. My aunt always has been and probably always will be the biggest attention whore I've ever met. At least I hope I never meet anyone worse. I'm going to sound awful at first but hear me out. It started when she got cancer. She'd post on Facebook about how long she was at doctors and how she felt and that the family needed to gather around more. She told everyone she was going to be dead in under six months. At the time I understood. Sure. Get that attention. Get some love from friends family, and internet strangers in your support group. That's an awful situation. She went into remission though. People didn't give her the same amount of encouragement and support she had been getting when she had led everyone to believe she was 100% going to die in 6 months. 
the people in the terminal cancer support group slowly stopped commenting completely, so I guess she missed the attention and started making posts bashing on the entire family that we're ungrateful and unappreciative of the battle she went through for us. My siblings and I lived too far for normal visits so we took a lot of fire during this time for not visiting enough when she thought she was dying. We did visit but not as often as she felt we should have. Fast forward about a year, and here's where it starts getting bad. She starts posting pictures of my grandmother who is no longer in her right state of mind. Awful pictures. Hair messed up. Food all over her face and clothes. Dark rings under her eyes. With comments like it's so hard to take care of your parents. Makes me so sad. Pray for us my grandmother's memory is so far gone that every time I visited she thought I was my mother who passed away years before. I wouldn't correct her, but my aunt loved to. Nanny she's dead she died years ago at which point my grandmother would sob uncontrollably until she forgot why she was crying. Rinse and repeat four to five times a visit. Each time my aunt would snap a photo and post about how hard it was to be the one to remind someone with dementia that her daughter-in-law is dead. Then I was in a car accident. It was a bad accident I broke my neck, and had a miscarriage. When I woke up in the hospital I was alone but she had already heard of the accident from my father, who was my emergency contact. She added the other car's family members on Facebook posted pictures of the car accident from the news and lied about my injuries. Such a bad accident I can't believe she hit you guys. Thank God you only got a broken arm and she only broke a hip. Praying for you posted the same photos but hidden from the other people's family tagged as another awful family catastrophe thank god op didn't get herself or someone else killed the accident wasn't my fault. I didn't break a hip. And one of the other car's passengers had a brain bleed and was in the hospital and rehab for over a year. And the most recent and the worst of all. I've never been big on Facebook and she quit tagging me when I asked her to stop contacting the other car's family as per my lawyer's request. Well my grandfather's health had taken a turn for the worst. He was in hospice care. She of course was milking it for attention for herself. Since she wasn't tagging me I was completely unaware. For this instance however she also neglected to tell my siblings and my father of this sudden and rapid health decline. Going as far as to hide the posts from my sister who always read and commented on her posts. None of us were aware. The rest of the family was gathered and was able to say their goodbyes on the day he died. She then posted a picture of my dead grandfather on Facebook telling everyone that they were lucky to have been there for him in his final moments. This time tagging me my siblings and my father. A follow-up post of my grandmother crying saying how am I supposed to tell her again when she forgets. Pray for us. Well I was at work when he passed so I didn't even see the posts yet. I got called into my manager's office because an aunt on my mother's side called yell at me because my awful aunt messaged her and told her none of us showed up to visit my grandfather on his deathbed. My manager let me leave early and I got to my phone in my locker and see the post and messages from my siblings that my father was distraught and drank himself into oblivion and was now at the hospital getting his stomach pumped. Wanna guess what my awful aunt's next post was? A post about my father drinking himself dumb because he felt guilty for being an awful son and not caring enough to visit his dying father. And how it made her so sick that she was alone in all this with no support from her baby brother. She kindly tagged us all in that post too. There was a girl in my college that constantly would say shit. During orientation she told people she was recovering from brain cancer didn't happen and was partially deaf she wasn't. She then found out my friend had epilepsy so she started doing these exaggerated tremors. She then would fake seizures all the time for all the years she was there. Which was a pain the butt because I would have to treat them like real ones. She did it once during a power outage for the most attention possible. She did it so often that once 911 hung up on someone calling it in because they knew it was her. A lady that I work with is the biggest one-upper I have ever met. In April I had major surgery to remove half of my digestive system and was given a lot of attention from our concerned co-workers. She was not happy because she wasn't the center of attention anymore. Well, she found out she needed to have a DNC outpatient procedure to cauterize her uterus and you're awake for the whole thing she came into work she decided to milk it for all she could. And when she came into work the next day she was distraught over the fact no one came to check up on her the night before and wouldn't talk about anything but her recovery. By the end of the week she was telling people she was recovering from cancer surgery.
In fact she still complains that she is recovering from it and this happened back in April. She also told me unsolicited of course that the reason she didn't come see me while I was in the hospital was because her mom had died in a hospital 13 years ago and she is still grieving and going to a hospital would make her grieving process start all over again. I actually feel bad for her. Oh, I know a bigger one upper than that. There was a girl who used to be part of this group of friends that I saw on the odd occasion when I was a teen. I only met her twice. But on both occasions she started to full on sing super loud whenever everybody else was talking and she was not involved in the conversation. Back in early elementary school during art I used to talk shit about my own art to get a lot of compliments from other students. My teacher noticed it and told me to stop. I once did that and my friend was like oh yeah you're right. It sucks and I felt so betrayed. My high school ex posted a picture of a knife to his wrist on Twitter after I broke up with him for cheating on me and being pathological liar. He told everyone to message me and to talk to him I cut off all contact or he was going to kill himself. I hate that I was young and dumb. So it worked and we ended up back together.